Hi and welcome to your Jacka J video installation guide. Please be aware this video is put together in conjunction with your written guide that you receive in your Jacka J kit. Today we're working on a 2014 Swan Tourer and let's get into it. A quick introduction to show the tools that you'll need for the removal of your current winch system and installation of your Jacka J kit. We've got some general hand tools, screwdrivers, pliers and cutters. We've got a set of socket sets, spanners, good set of Allen keys, a hammer. We've got a rattle gun and a drill. You can just use a drill. Good set of bolt cutters for cutting the stainless steel wires out. Full set of drill bits, some timber props to hold your roof up and a set of window packers or something to adjust. Now for a review of your Jacka J kit and the component tree. First off, we have our tube assemblies, one for each corner. Important note, these are your micro switches with your cable harness connections. And in here, we have your bronze block, very important to note for later on. We also have your pre-greased flexible push rods. We also have your brand new fully enclosed corner guides. Moving along, we have your motor drives. These come with your quick connect plug and play cable connection. And also very important, these are your grub screws to connect to your tube assemblies. We have now your Jack J controller. Again, with your plug and play cable harness connection points, your rear motor drives. We have your cable ties, sticky bucks, and bushes for your cables, and a spare grease tub for your corner guides. Here we have all of your plug and play cable harnesses. We'll break these down for you later on. They're all here in the corner of the box. Up here we have your full set of screws for mounting your Jacka J kit and your installation guide and your user guide. Okay, now for the removal of your winch system. What we have in this Swan is at the front of the caravan we have a lounge setup. We've gained access to the winch system at the far extremities of the front by removing the cushions, the panelling that we have here and we can now gain access to where the winch is. Also at the rear, it's the same story. We have the same similar panelling removed by some simple timber screws. This step is removed to access the existing tubes. And we also have this vertical cupboard, which was in the corner here. Again, simple unscrewing of the bracketry, gaining access to the areas underneath for the winch system. Now for the point of your Jacka J installation in setting your roof height. I cannot stress how important during this whole installation process that this step is. This is setting your roof height to the point where your Jacka J system will automatically lift to time and time again. This is the opportunity that you have to fine tune the height of your roof. With the Jayco factories and other installers, sometimes with the manual system, you can have some discrepancy on corner heights. That's not a problem. The really, really important things I wanna draw your attention to today is going to be the tension of your canvas here and also the height of your door and the tension of the aluminium bracket above it. These are the two very, very important factors you take into consideration when you're setting your roof height. Now we set the roof height and hold it up with timber supports. Once the winch system is removed, these timber supports are going to be what's holding up the roof during three or four hours of Jack J installation. It's really, really important to have these timbers secured with cable ties or another device to ensure that these can't come out. If they come out, it can cause injury or damage to your camper trailer. In getting the roof height set correctly, what we do, we put it up with the manual winch system and we do a visual of where the canvas is and where the door is at. 
Once we're happy with canvas tension and the door tension, we then take a measurement with a tape measure from the lower lip of the roof all the way down to the upper edge of your side wall. This is the measurement you need to cut your timbers to to prop your roof to the right height. We use a standard timber length and we use some very simple window packers to fine tune the height and to make sure it's sturdy. Really, really important here that once you have set your roof height and your timbers, that this timber is sturdy. If this is moving around or dropping, what it means is that the roof is gonna drop a little bit once you remove your winch system and then you will have an incorrect roof height. Really, really important. Again, I can't stress how important this is. You get this correct. This will definitely change the way your Jack J system works. If it's too tight, again, the Jack J system is gonna sense a fault. It's gonna think it's ripping your canvas and it will trip. These adjustments can be made later on, but if we do it now, we do it correctly and we take some time, it'll make life a lot easier later on. Besides the canvas in setting your roof height, your side door is a physical fixture and really, really important to get right. If your roof is set too low, then your side door will clamp in or stress the hinge at the top. And if it's too loose or the roof is too high, it can flap around in the breeze. We don't want this. So please make sure when you're setting your roof height prior to removing the winch system, you always double check the tension on your side door. Now that we've exposed all the access paneling to our old winch system, we're gonna remove the winch. We, at this point, we have our roof height set correctly and we've wound tension off the winch so that all of our cables are now slack. To remove your winch, you'll simply find four nuts and bolts that go through the floor in each corner of the winch assembly. At this point, we will also undo the four nuts on the back of the bolts on our fish plate. That will loosen off or take off all of our four individual wires, which go to our individual corners. Okay, now that our winch has been removed, it's exposed the drive mechanism of the old winch system, pulleys and cables. This setup in this corner is exactly the same in all four corners of the camper trailer. So to remove these, you'll find a singular bolt with a nut and some timber screws. Take them all out. It'll loosen up your drive tube. There's also a screw at the other end of this tube. This here, you have your old eye bolt. If you want to, you can cut that off with some bolt cutters. Really important note here is on this corner guide, you'll be removing these open corner guides and putting in the Jacker J fully enclosed tube corner guides. To remove this guide, there's two screws on the bottom and two screws on the side wall of your camper. Very, very important note, do not remove the screws for this upper bracket. This is the support for your telescopic mast on the bottom point of that mast. Do not remove these four screws, only these two here and everything downwards. Now we have the whole old winch system completely removed. Now is a really good opportunity to get into this space and get as much of the old grease the dirt, the swarf, and all the junk out of this compartment. It's clean. Also, take the opportunity to come in and silicon up all of your holes. That'll help, you know, limit any water ingress through the floor. Because once your Jacker J system goes in, it can be hard to access those. We can just note we've left the bracket in here for the bottom of our telescopic mast. And we also have the old hole in the wall here where our winch handle used to come through. This is where our cable harnesses from our controller will come in from the boot at the front and into this cabinetry area. And that's it, get it cleaned up, get it spick and span, and let's get it ready for your Jacker J installation. Just wanna reiterate here, take your time, take note of all the color coding, work through the manual, make sure you double check yourself at the stop points in the guide, and just work through this progressively. You've pretty much already done half the work. You've got the old system out, you've got your roof set to the right height, 
you have to double check anything, now's a chance to go back, double check a few things, make sure you're ready for Jacker J. Get tools out of the camper trailer, get the floor cleaned up, and let's get installing. All right, putting our corner guides into the corner of our camper trailer. We need to slide the upper part of the enclosed guide into the base of the telescopic mast up under here. Now, depending on your camper, this is always different. Sometimes this guide will slide up into the mast without undoing some screws. Occasionally, you might need to just loosen these off a little bit to give it a little bit of play. Today, I've had to unscrew this one. The rest of the corners actually went straight in again. A good example. We're gonna get our guide, we're gonna place it up in the mast, give it a wiggle in place, and let it sit here nice and loosely. Another note here is to also get the small grease tub that we supply in your Jacker J kit. What you wanna do, take the cap off, we wanna put a good thumb scoop into the base of the corner guide, just like so. Nice and simply, this will apply a bit of lubrication when we push our push rod up into the corner guide and into our mast. Another note here as well, don't secure your, your corner guide to the floor just yet. We'll do that later on. And also while we're here, if you have loosened off these screws, make sure to do them back up now. It's one less thing to forget later on. All right, next we're gonna install our flexible push rods. These come pre-greased in your Jacker J kit, ready to go. The main note here is to ensure that you have your domed head inserted first into the guide. This pushes on your telescopic mast to raise the roof. Simply slide it into the base of the corner elbow, push it all the way through until it stops. And a good note here is to have something a bit heavy. What you might find is that it won't sit there by itself. Someone's getting a pair of pliers, just placing it there to hold it in place is a good little trick. Okay, next up we have the installation of your tube assemblies and motor drives. Now's a really good opportunity, whilst you're not actually in your camper trailer, to get the components out, get it on a table and understand how they go together, and some critical points here to make sure that are correct before getting in the camper. A lot easier here, that way we know we're pretty sweet. So coming down, I like to kind of work with the fronts first, and then later on we'll do the rears. On the front passenger side tube here, some important points are this drive spigot here, which exits out the end of our square tube assembly. This is what we'll insert into the base of our flexible push rod. Essentially, the spring will slide out of our black corner guide across the spigot, and it'll come all the way up and it'll strike this small bronze block inside. That is the device which pushes the spring or the flexible push rod along. Very, very important that it comes all the way home. Also, while we're here, looking at this bronze block, very important that you're able to see it, that it is not traveled up the tube this way or pushing against the limit switch. We need to ensure that it's about one millimeter or just kissing the switch without activating it. This allows us about five millimeters of play for the bronze block and the flexible push rod to take the weight of the roof prior to the Jacker J automatically stopping lift when it activates the switch. Also while we're here, you can see your two points of contact for your plug and play electrical harness. And also up here, we can see our floor mount holes for our tube assembly. Sliding the tube along, we'll come to the other end of it. Here, I'll come down we can see the motor drive section of our square tube. This here will insert into our tube guide up here. Very, very important to understand how this works now. You'll see the shaft come out through the hole at the end, and what it needs to do is insert into this plumb coupler drive. Important to know how this works. We need to ensure that it comes all the way in and goes all the way home nice and strong, nice and tight, and we can see the bearing at the end of the tube here. Another really important point here is that these two grub screws on this plumb drive, once you've installed it in the caravan, not now, are really, really tight. This is where the torque from the motor is transferred through to your square tube assembly. Very important that these are tight. Also, while we're here, we can see our two front mount holes for our floor, 
and we can also see our two external rear mount holes and our plug and play cable harness connection. Really, really important guys, check all these things off, pull it back apart again, and make sure that you understand how this goes together while you're here in the open and not stuck in your camper trailer. Now we're in the camper trailer and we're looking to put our tube assembly and our drive assembly together and get it into position to secure to the floor. Now now's a good opportunity to kind of gauge whether or not you're able to actually put these two assemblies together prior to sliding it through cabinetry. You'll find one end of your camper will have better access than the other. Here, I know I've had lots of room and I'm actually able to put these two assemblies together. You can either do this previously when we're out on the table or now we're in here and we know it's gonna go in okay, I'm gonna do it here just for demonstration's sake. Tell you what we spoke about earlier, I'm gonna make sure the motor drive goes all the way over and the spigot enters the plumb drive completely. I'm gonna do that chance here to tighten up all my grub screws while I'm here, rather than working down in the cavity here in the cabinetry, just makes it easier. Now, to access here, the grub screw, I need to actually slightly turn the plumb drive. So I'm gonna turn it with my hand until I can access the grub screw. Now I have noted is actually spun my drive thread here. So the bronze block at the end may have moved. Another important reason why to follow our stop checkpoints in our manual, just to make sure everything is correct prior to bolting everything down. Now I have access to this grub screw, two and a half mil Allen key, tighten it up and ensure it's really, really tight. Like we said earlier, this is where all the torque is pressed through from our motor drive to our tube assembly. Nice and tight, one grub screw, two grub screws. I can see the washer and we're all together. Now I know that I can install this unit all the way in the camper trailer and get ready to fix it down. Okay, next we're going to slide our tube assembly up towards our corner guide and insert our flexible push rod over the spigot at the end here and get it ready to be screwed down later on. Important note here is that you've already got your motor mounted to the other end of our square tube. Everything is nice and tight, grub screws are tight, and here we want to visually check again our bronze block. Very, very important again that it is not activating our switch. We need to ensure this block is just off the roller on the end of the arm. We know that's been satisfied. We can grab our flexible push rod. We can insert it over the spigot on the end and slide it up to the bronze block. We'll push it all the way up, make sure it's nice and tight, and the spring is fully engaged. In the manual, we speak about a gap of five to 40 millimeters. This is in reference to the distance between the end of our black corner guide to our red tube assembly. We want to ensure this gap is no bigger than say 40 or 50 mil out here, or our colored tube assembly is not touching our black corner guide. If these two things have occurred, we need to address the spring length. Either if it's too long or too far back, cut the spring down, or if it's too far up, we need to get a longer spring. This gap here, around about 25 millimeters, is absolutely beautiful. Again, let's check the bronze block, and away we go. Okay, now we're up to fixing down all of our componentry here in the front. We've got corner guides in, flexible push rods in, all tube assemblies in on both sides. In here we have the green and the red. Very important at the moment to make sure before we start fixing equipment down that we have enough room for everything. Everything lines up in the right spots, everything's nice and linear, and if you have a wall removed, it can go back into position. All those kind of things are important to make sure that when you go to put cabinetry back together again, you haven't drilled your motors in the wrong spot or your corner guides are fouling on something. That's why we haven't screwed anything down until everything is into the cabinetry. So here, we're going to do corner guides first. First point of call on both sides. Okay, now we're going to fix down our corner guides. Pretty simple process. 
make sure that the corner guide is reasonably linear with your tube. If there's a slight skew on the tube, not a problem. That's why we have a flexible push rod. It allows for a bit of movement. The important thing is this tube is not sitting up on this foot. It has to sit into the cutout in the base of this corner elbow. We're gonna select only four holes on this corner guide and then do a pilot drill bit with a small drill and then we'll dr drill through the correct screw, whether it be a timber screw or a self-tapping metal screw. So I'm gonna drill a hole in here, all the way through. That's gone through to some metal. Now I'm just gonna drive through one of our metal screws to lock it in place and locate it. And that's it. We'll do four of those and the corner guide is finished. All right, now we've got our corner guide fixed to the floor. We're gonna actually mount our drive assembly, motor and square tube together. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do the green one because the red motor is up the other end still. Very, very important, now we're talking about actually mounting the motor and tube assembly, is that we put pressure on the system towards the corner guide. If it's the red one, we wanna push this way. If it's the green one, we wanna press pressure this way. What we're trying to do is put as much tension on the lift system, on the flexible push rod as possible, so there's a bit less slack when the actual system takes the weight of the roof. So rather than trying to actually put pressure on this and get a screw and drill it, I'm simply going to put a fair bit of pressure against the motor mount as much as I can, and I'm gonna mark the floor, one, two spots, and then move it out of the way. My two markings here, I'm simply going to get my drill, a small pilot bit, I'm gonna pilot hole the floor to see whether or not I have timber or metal. That was very easy, so I've actually just got timber, so I'll use timber screws only. Screw this one out as well. Then I'll go and move my motor mount back to position and I'll secure it to the floor at the rear. This will hold the pressure of our spring system. Now I can see now, just with it sitting here, my holes don't line up, which is perfect. It means I need to put pressure on our system and then drive the screw in under pressure. Perfect. I can actually feel the tension in that system. Again, I'm just doing the green to show you the demonstration point, but every single corner is the same. Put your two screws in the rear to hold your pressure and then make your way to the front of the motor. You have two more holes here, pilot drill, screws in, and then make your way to the front of the tube and secure the front of your tube with these two smaller screws. Okay, next we're gonna install your Jacka J controller. Here in the Jacos, it's gonna be located in the front boot area on the passenger side. This controller can pretty much go anywhere, hence why you've got flexible harnesses and all plug and play. On the Jacos, it's important to note that the controller has two screw holes on either side. We can place them on the ridges within the boot area. Try not to place it over any gaps so you're securing nice and firm to a surface. While we're in here, we have the harnesses will come out of the controller and they'll dress down the side of the boot space and they'll enter the caravan through a 32 mil bush, which goes through where the old winch used to be. Okay, once you've mounted your controller, we need to put a 32 mil bush in here. This is the cavity where the winch used to be. It's now used for running our cables through. So essentially, your plug and play harnesses will run out of your controller, down the wall, through this bush, and into your camper trailer. Okay, next up are your wiring harnesses. Your Jacka J kit will come with four individual wiring harnesses. The first three we'll talk on are part of your main installation. First harness is your battery harness. Two pin, quick connect, Deutsch plug, which goes to your controller. The other end, two ring terminals that are fused to connect to your battery. Very important note, you have to install this lead from inside the caravan 
to the front boot area, mainly because you are not going to be able to squeeze this fuse holder through the 32 mil bush in the front of your camper. So again, this harness is installed from inside to out. The next harness we'll talk about is your rear motor and limit switch mechanism harness. This will go to the rear of the caravan. You have an eight pin Deutsch plug connector, which goes to your controller. On the other ends, you will have two motor connections and you will have two limit switch connections, passenger side, driver side. Really, really important. I cannot stress enough that you follow the color coding. These are color coded to match the drive tubes to try and limit any mistakes or any incorrect connections. Very, very important. We'll elaborate on this again later on, why it's important to look at these colors. Next one, third harness is our front harness. Exactly the same as our rear harness, just shorter. Different colors, again, your eight pin connector and your other bits and pieces. Now, these two harnesses for your motor assemblies must be installed from front boot area through the bush into the caravan. It's the reverse to your battery, mainly because again, you will not be able to feed your eight pin Deutsch connector through that, through that, that bush. And that's it, that's your harnesses. Now, the next one we have is our jumper lead harness. This is your get me out of trouble if your battery goes flat in your camper trailer. It's a simple unplugging of your main battery harness from your controller, plugging in this two pin Deutsch plug connector into the controller, and then hooking up these alligator clips to any other 12 volt supply. This will get your Jack and J controller working, get you out of trouble and either back on the road or get your caravan set up. Next, we have the cable harnesses roughly running to the front section of the camper trailer. That is, we've pulled all three harnesses through from the inside to out and run through the bushes. At the front here, near the controller, I have a little bit of slack of cable ready to be dressed in, very little. We've also got our Jack AJ controller installed. Important note, do not plug in your harnesses yet. We will do that later on. Okay, next we're inside the camper trailer. We can see our three harnesses, one, two, three, coming through the old winch area and laying nice and neatly in the front cavity. Nothing's fixed, nothing's dressed, everything's roughly laying in place for now. I've run all the harnesses towards the rear of the cavity to not foul any of the motor drives or the tubes. I've pulled the front one out of the way, hung it over ready for connection. I've also run our rear harness and battery harness around the outside. Through some cutouts, I have our battery harness sitting here ready for connection. And I also have my rear cabling harness sitting here prepared, ready on our stainless steel draw wire, which we left in previously to pull through the back of the caravan. Very important note here. When you sticky tape these connections together, they need to be staggered. What you'll find at the back of your fridge down here is a small tube. If you stagger your connections, you'll be able to pull it through okay. If you don't, it'll jam. Another very important note, this wire in this cabinetry behind the fridge, microwaves, cupboards, you'll find two. There's two pulleys which have to be removed first, otherwise you can't pull this through. Now that we have all of our cable harnesses roughed in, that is the rear cable harness goes all the way through cabinetry to the back area of the caravan, battery harness goes to the battery, and the front harness comes here to the front area. Now, this is where the most common mistake is made doing connections to our tubes. Very, very important to note that the right colored connections go into the right colored accessory. The case in point here is that in this corner, we have a green motor, but we have a red tube. Please note the connection of colors that you're doing. Very, very important. These are a simple quick connect fitting. So here we have green motor, so we'll select our green motor connection, two pin Deutsch plug, push it in till you hear a nice click, give it a bit of a tug to ensure it's a true connection. Then also we're gonna grab our red limit switch connection. Very important here that you ensure the male pin on the limit switch goes home 
to the female connector, not either side of the plastic. Very, very important. You'll also notice here that the connections are staggered. That's to match the limit switch to keep it look nice and neat and tidy and to not fall off. So a simple connection, slide it down to the clip, a nice clip feeling, ensure it feels like it's gone home nicely and also give it a good bit of a tug and a wobble to make sure the connections are on. We don't want those coming off. Same thing for all corners, motor connection, limit switch, make sure everything's nice and home and double check your colors. Okay, once we have our front and rear cabling harnesses all connected to the motor drives and limit switches, we've double checked the color coding. The final connection that we do in the camper trailer is to the battery. Don't mean to tell you how to suck eggs, but red goes to red, black goes to black. Let's make sure it's nice and neatly dressed in, and that's our connection. Please ensure that at this time you haven't plugged into the controller yet. It's easy to send spikes to the controller if you're touching these on the connections doing up bolts. So we definitely advise to have the connections at the controller still disconnected at this time. Now we're doing your wiring harness connections at your Jack J controller. At this time, we've got a connection at the battery done. We have all of our internal connections on our motor drives and limit switches completed. And we're ready to power up our controller. Quick point is to make sure the controller is turned off. This here is our main power button. To know that it's not going to power up just yet, this button will be flush with the surface. If it's depressed into it, that means the controller is turned on. So let's make sure that button is definitely out. Our first connection, nice and simple, eight pin Deutsch connection. Pull this sleeve back a little bit to make sure you get a nice positive connection and clip into the controller. Once you know it's nice and tight, slide the sleeve up and we'll dress it in. Let's do the same for the rear. Slide it in, nice and home, get a nice click sound and ensure it's in and then dress it in with the sleeve. The next one that we'll do is our power. Same thing again, plug her in, make sure we get a nice clicking sound, sound and slide up the sleeve. Once we're at this point, we're actually ready to power it up. Before we power anything up, this is a really good opportunity to go back through your installation guide and double check all of our stop checkpoints and make sure everything is where it should be. Go back through your caravan, double check your grub screws, double check your color coding and make sure everything is correct. It'll take you two minutes and could save us a lot of heartache in the near future. So let's power it up and get your Jacket J system working. Okay, so the first step of our commissioning is going to involve jogging or bumping the controller in the down direction. First thing we'll do, turn the controller on with the power button. You should get your Jacket J logo and your push button should illuminate in the background. Here we have our introduction screen, a few details, some safety precautions, and your current firmware and printer circuit board edition. To progress through the screen, we touch accept button, and this is your home page. Here you have your roof up option, your roof down option, and during any operation, your stop button. You've also got an indication here of your current battery voltage. For us here, we just wanna do a few, I'm gonna call three down jog functions. So it's a simple push button of the down for one second. One, two, three, and that's it. Now we'll go inside the caravan and we'll double check the next points. Okay, now that we've done three jog functions down, we wanna come inside the camper trailer and make sure our bronze block has traveled down the tube. If it's gone up, it will have activated this switch and we'll be past this gap here. If it's done that, it is incorrect and there's a wrong connection on your motors. The motor is essentially going the opposite direction that it should be. So at this point, we check all four corners to ensure the bronze block has traveled down the tube. Once going in the camper trailer and double checking that our four bronze blocks have all traveled down the tube, we're gonna come back out of the controller where we are now 
and you will see the screen will have gone blank. This is standby mode. You know the controller is still on if this blue button is still illuminated and the button is depressed. To bring it back from standby, we touch the screen. What we're gonna do now is do a automatic roof up function. That's achieved by holding our roof up button for more than three seconds and entering automatic mode. We'll do that now. Commence roof lift in auto operation mode. Touch the blue button. Now, what the system has done, it has driven the bronze block to the up position. And if we see lift complete on all four corners, we know that bronze block has traveled up the drive tubes and activated all four limit switches. So now we're gonna go inside and double check that. Okay, now that we've done our automatic lift function and proven on the screen that limit switches have been activated, when you come back inside here, and what you want to see is that this bronze block has come back up the tube and has activated this switch. We are going to do this on all four corners just to ensure visually it looks correct. And you can also check here that that switch cannot be switched because it's already switched. And this proves that the Jacker J lift operation has been completed successfully. Okay, now that we know Jacker J has successfully done a up automatic function and is now holding the weight of the roof, now we can go here and we can check our timber props. These should have no weight on them, hence the Jacker J system is now holding the weight of the roof. Give them a quick wobble and we can see here that there's very little weight on that. What we can do, if we're happy, we can cut our side, cut our cable ties off and remove our timbers. Beautiful. If you experience any kind of dropping of the roof, when you remove the timbers, you need to double check your installation. Not the end of the world, see if you're happy with it, but perfect scenario is that the timbers are loose. When you remove your timber, the roof doesn't drop and we can move on and do all four corners. Okay, and now that we've confirmed our automatic lift operation, we've removed our props. We're confident now that the Jacka J system is working well. You need to have checked your roof heights again Make sure your side door is adequate and not too tight or too loose. And essentially now that we're happy with the Jacker J system, we're gonna go about dressing in the cabling. We provide sticky backs and cable ties to help with this. Take the time, dress it in, get it looking nice and throw a few cable ties on. We're all cleaned up. Everything off the floor, tools are all being put away, nice clean up, nice vacuum of the caravan, and we're ready to do a full down and a full up automatic option. You can have a look, we haven't packed it all away, just in case we have to access some last bits and pieces, but we've got everything nice and low. We can now slide the beds in each end and go for it. Okay, here we are. We're gonna do our full down function and our full automatic up function. Inside, we're all cleaned up, cushions are in. We have all well, the bed ends pushed in. The side door has been lifted up and we are ready to go. So I'll do a down function. We'll go around, keep an eye on everything and make sure it goes down nice and cleanly. So as you can see, as the roof's coming down, I can walk around it nice and slowly. I can tuck our canvas away, make sure there's no snags nothing that's going to cause us an issue and we have around about two minutes to kind of you know get the whole roof down and make sure we're all happy as you can hear reasonably quiet a nice little moan and whine from the motors be nice and careful of our fly screens we're about halfway now the canvas is tucking in nicely Just be mindful when the roof comes down a little bit further to make sure you've got most of your canvas away. If need be, you can duck into your controller and hit the stop button. We don't want to get into a situation where the roof's coming down and we're going to get our hands or arms stuck. 
Don't forget too that the Jack J system is also a roof support system. It's not actually pulling it down. So the uh, mechanical system inside is never gonna actually clamp down onto your arms or your hands or your head at all. It's always just gonna be, you know, supporting the roof. So if you do have a situation where something gets stuck, a bed end or some canvas, it's only gonna experience the weight of gravity on the roof. They're pretty much there now. We'll show you a grab from the controller. It'll pretty much show that a stage that might get down first to be waiting. Then you'll hear the motors all stop and they'll actually reverse for two seconds. The system resets and it's ready to go for a lift function. And there we go, our roof is down successfully. Okay, now that we've done a successful down operation, we know everything's all clear. We'll just do a single automatic up operation make sure our full travel goes okay, and we can go from there. Again, back to the controller. Automatic roof up function, and away we go. What you'll hear is the motor's free spilling for a little while, then slowly they'll take the weight of the roof and it will start lifting up. Now as it was when the roof came down, you as the user can walk around and keep an eye on your canvas, keep an eye on your telescopic masts as well. Make sure they're going up nice and evenly. They can be an issue too. So the Jacker J gives you the ability to be able to walk around, check things nice and slowly to make sure that we're getting a pretty good lift function. So as I walk around, it's the same as last time. Checking our canvas for any snags, making sure everything's going up nice and evenly. Again, we can just hear the soft wind of the motors going round and round. It's all looking pretty good and pretty even. So keep in mind if you have left a clip on a roof or there's a snag somewhere or the roof's too heavy, just be aware that the controller here has that fault detection capability and it will trip out, tell you where the faults occurred and then you can go and reset it and go again. At the moment, canvas is looking really nice. This is kind of getting to the point around about a third to halfway up that it's a really good time to go around and check your telescopic masts. Make sure you've got a nice little bit of free play in them. If your masts are in good nick and your caravan is really level, you'll see they'll move nice and freely. This is where we want to make sure that none of these inside sections come out. If they're moving freely and a bit of play in them, you can be confident we're going to have a good lift. All right guys, that's it. All finished today, congratulations on getting your Jack J system installed and commissioned successfully. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video was able to help you understand some of the different areas visually of the guide. And just please always refer to the written guide as your main source of direction. This video is just here to prompt any questions you might have had. That's it, we had a successful lift. Your winch is out, your Jack J is in, and you're ready for some good holidays ahead. Any post care, maintenance, any of those kind of details, please refer to the user guide. Any troubleshooting, please also refer to the user guide or your local distributor or give us a call here at Jacka J. Enjoy your holidays, congratulations, and don't forget, Jacka J, the easy way.